What's up everyone? Hope everyone is doing amazing today. And today I want to make a video about answering a subscriber's question. And guys, this video is going to be special because it's going to be basically a little bit of everything. And I wanted to make this kind of video because, you know, we reply to every comment, but also want to uh, show you guys the reply that we give to the comment. Well, not that we give to everybody, but just that I'm going to answer right now on live. So I have 10 questions, uh, 10 popular questions that a lot of people ask me often. And uh, some of them less popular, some of them more popular, but you know, they're kind of popular. So that's why I wanted to answer them. So I'm going to make more videos like this. If you like it, let me know. If you want me to reply to questions like that, please like, comment and subscribe. Well, more like and comment if you want me to make more videos like this and to answer questions. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer questions. So yeah, please do not forget to like and comment specifically on this video if you want me to make this type of video. If not, I will never make those type of videos again. So yeah, let's start diving in. Thanks. Do you use a single pixel for a general store or do you have different pixel per niche? Uh, okay, so if you're doing Facebook ads, because I'm doing Facebook and TikTok ads mostly, so I'm going to speak for both of them. So if you are, if you are running on Facebook ads, is only one pixel per store. Even if you have a general store, if you and if you have a niche store, even if you have a one product store, one pixel per store. Uh, why? Well, simply because Facebook is way smarter. Then his competitors way more advanced. Uh, the algorithm is way better. So overall, one single pixel. And for TikTok is one pixel per product. That's what I do. One pixel per product. There's many application out there that allows you to have multiple pixel at the same time. So if you have multiple winners on a general store on TikTok, I will use multiple uh, pixels. So yeah, that's what you want to do. And if you feel uncomfortable, let's say with multiple pixels and you don't know how to perfectly do it, don't worry. What you should do is the time when you have, let's say, a winner with your general store on TikTok, then just create another store with a new pixel, everything, and start running now your testing product on this new store. If you don't want to deal with the stress or with the, um, you know, uh, the problems are ha of having two pixels. You can just create another store and keep testing while you're scaling this product on the on the general store. So now let's go on the second one. Have you done EU dropshipping in English language or only native language as I do native? Okay, so if you're targeting multiple countries in the EU, so let's say uh, Germany, France, Spain, if you're gar targeting the United Kingdom, if you're targeting those countries, then I would suggest multiple at the same time that I will suggest you to use English as a language because that's the language they have all in common. But if you're targeting a single country at the time, then use their native language. It is way better. That's my answer for that question. So if someone is a beginner, then how much product you should recommend to try in a week or a day? So amazing question. How many products should you test per day? Should you test per week? Well, there's no right on or, or wrong answer to that. It's all about your budget. Uh, let me explain. So let's say you're making, I don't know, $2,000 per uh, per month and out of that two thousand dollars per month you end up with five hundred dollars uh, free so let's say you have five hundred dollars free that um, it, it's for you well what I suggest you to do is to split that in half 250 is to do whatever you want put it put a safety net and 250 will be for a testing product so you'll be testing 200 uh, 250 dollars dollars worth of product per month and that will be uh, your budget and that's how you should do it so if you make 10k per month you won't test the same that if you making 2k per month if you're making 50k per month per month then you'll not be testing the same amount that if you would be making 2k per month and etc 
So that's how you should do it. Uh, you know, a lot of people, what they try to do is they try to set aside $2,000. And after when they spend $2,000, they stop dropshipping. No, dropshipping is a game of consistency. It's a game of discipline. It's a game of momentum. So it's like going to the gym. You're not going to go ham uh, for a month, like 12 hours a day. And the other month, you're not going to go because you don't have more energy. It doesn't work like that. So what do you want to do is you want to set aside a budget every single um, every single month to be able to test. Thanks. Uh, do you guys have specific prompt when using ChatGPT or do you just use different, you use it in a different way depending on the situation? Well, I use it in a different way depending on the situation. Basically, what do I do is I... Uh, try to humanize ChatGPT. How to humanize ChatGPT is by writing what you want first, uh, building what you want first, and then telling them to rearrange it in a better way. But if you tell them to give you uh, and uh, specific information about your product or whatever, they will give you genish, de, uh, generic robotic response, and it will lose that human thing. So every product is different. Every product I uh, say different things about them. So uh, basically write it down yourself and afterwards I just GPT to make it better without mistake. And that's uh, how I do it. So great video. Uh, what do you guys think of TikTok? Image ads might be a good video. And guys, if you look carefully, I've took uh, specifically um, a lot of questions from the same people. Why? Because they're always commenting. They're always commenting and I want to really, you know, give a chance to the people that that always comment and I want to give them exposure. I want to give them, you know, gratitude. It's like, hey, you're commenting more than the other people and I'm going to reply to someone else's question. No, you're commenting more you than other people. So I, I will give you more exposure. I will give you more time to you. So the more you comment, the more I see you, the more I will take you on other videos to reply to your question because I see you guys. I see you replying. I know who's uh, watching our videos. I know who's commenting. And those are the ones that I'm going to reply to. And if you're just replying, uh, asking a question one time and you never come back, then high likely, you know, we will reply on the comments because we reply to every comment, but we will not make more videos about you uh, other than uh, compared to you know, the video that I'm making with those uh, people right here. Great video. What do you think about, what do you guys think of TikTok image ads? Might be a good video idea. Okay, so I've made a video about it and it's a great idea. A video image ads. Um, I think that's the new thing that is going to happen on TikTok. Why? Because it allows you to test as many products as you can. You know, you're kind of limited by the videos that are on TikTok and by ordering the product yourself to... Uh, basically uh, make videos yourself. And that's the two ways that you can test on TikTok. But if you have images, then you can literally test the whole AliExpress website yourself uh, without a problem. So you're awesome. Thank you. Can you explain how to do aggressive scaling to get the most money before the ad dies? You are awesome. Thank you. Can you explain how to do aggressive scaling to get the most of it. Okay, so the first thing that you need to understand is your question is good, but it's not good. Let me explain you. The first thing is your ad should not die. What you need to do is always create a new set of ads before they die, because if they die and you change them afterwards or you don't change them, then you lose the momentum. And, you know, some people, they, let's say, scale the product to 30,000. And they're like, oh, this product is dead. No, it's not dead. Is your ads are saturated. They are having, um, you know, they're fatigued and you need to change them. And drop shipping, and specifically on ads, you have something that is called momentum and you need to keep the momentum. And how to keep the momentum is you want to create a lot of ads and be testing a lot of ads. So you always on a, an aggressive scaling without, you know, problems because you're always, always having newer creatives. And to ask, to reply to your question, well, it's pretty simple. You duplicate or you increase the budget. 
Uh, that's basically what you need to do. And you need to find a sweet spot because each product has a different spot. You cannot scale every product at 10K per day. You cannot scale every product at 2K per day. You cannot scale every product at 50K per day. Every product has a stop depending on how winning it is. You need to find yours with your product and basically changing ads and keeping those uh, expenses, uh, those, you know, expenses on scaling high or on that level in order, you know, to uh, to keep your ads consistent because that's what you want at the end of the day. It's not make as much money as your ad, but keep them consistent so they can uh, they can stay longer. What is the best time to uh, start testing hoodies, fall products, hoodie fall product? Well, the best time to start testing hoodies fall products are um, beginning of September, even late August, like late August, beginning September is the best time uh, to start testing hoodies fall products. Or if you don't know, let's say you have a Walmart or a Target or whatever like kind of store like you have uh, in your place where you live, go there and go see when they change the season. When they change the season, this is the time when you should start testing different products. I know right now in Canada, uh, in Walmart, in Costco, um, they are already changing their product to fall product. So it, it's already the right time. So a winning product is supposed to have good metrics from the start. Yes, a winning product is supposed to have good metrics from the start, even though you have Blu-ray videos, your videos are not so good, uh, your marketing is not the perfect one. A winning product will have, you know, good metrics from the start. So if it doesn't have metrics from the start, if it's not making sales from the start, that it's not a winning product, simple as it is. So guys, it, it is very simple. You have a winning product in your hand, um, you know, the, depending on how many sales you're having early on and how good the metrics are, and the metrics will be good and the sales will be good early on. So to keep testing products 20 per month is fi uh, financially almost not possible. You spend almost $300 per product. Also, Facebook learning phase costs money, but that their gurus don't say. Well, what you need to understand is you don't need to test 300. Well, look, I'm giving you, when I'm telling you those things that people test on average 300 to $300 per product, we don't do that. Me and my brother, we have, uh, basically a strategy where we spend around $25 to $50 at most, $25 to $50 per product at most, um, most likely closer to $25. And, and this is more sustainable to test with $25, 25 products, because if you do 25, then um, 20 is less than 300 times 20, obviously. So that's what you want to keep in mind. And the learning phase, the learning phase Nobody gives a damn about the learning phase. The learning phase is not true. The learning phase is about Facebook wanting you to spend more. Your product should make money before the learning phase. All my winning products, no exception, made money before the learning phase. The learning phase will maybe increase your sales by 3%, 4% after the learning phase, 5% maybe. 10% at most, but if you're not profitable, 10% more, or if you're not making sales, 10% more, is it going to make it? No, and it's highly likely not 10% more. So don't rely on the learning phase. Uh, what is your consideration from starting uh, for starting ads at midnight? In my experience, I spend between five to $10 before 12 while uh, testing, while well, most of my sales are made after 9, 10 isn't a waste of money. Okay, so most of my ads, I start them at midnight. Basically, all of my ads, I start them at midnight. Always, always, always. Why? Because it gives a 24 hours lapse time to spend your money um, and learn where is the best placement for you. But if you have a winning product and you tell me, Look, I have a winning product and my sales, not my spending, my sales, because the, yes, it is going to spend a few dollars from midnight to 9 a.m. 
But if you have a winning product, it shouldn't make sales even during that time. I'm telling you. So that's why I leave it at midnight because it gauges properly the expenses. But if you're having sales at a specific time of the day, because there's always exceptions in drop shipping, if you're having sales at a specific time of the day, then you can start running your ads at that specific time and test it to see how it works. Or what you can do if you're running TikTok ads, leave it at 12 midnight, but start increasing the budget towards the time that you're getting the most sales and lower the budget towards the time that you're getting the less sales. That's what you want to uh, do uh, if you're on TikTok. So yeah, guys, those are the 10 questions, I believe. Yes, those are the 10 questions of today. So yeah, if you have any more questions, please let me know down below. I'm going to keep replying to any of your questions and more of the people that comment. So if you want me to make more videos like this, don't forget to like and comment. And if you want me to reply to your question, then I see you out there. Keep asking questions and I will take you for another video. See you on the next video. Take care and peace.